let's talk about the common cold. Here we are, it's December in the Northeast, right prime in the middle of respiratory season. Colds are caused by viruses, and there are many different types of viruses. Highly contagious, tons of different varieties, you don't get immune, which is annoying because you can catch cold after cold after cold. Most infants and toddlers will catch an average of seven to eight upper respiratory infections a year. And if you think about it, if those are really concentrated, at least in the Northeast in the winter months, then that's seven to eight upper respiratory infections in a five or six month period, it's really like you're going from cold to cold to cold. What are the symptoms of the common cold? Well, obviously it starts with a runny nose. And if we think about our upper respiratory tract, basically everything on the inside of the head, it's one connected plumbing system in there. So when you have mucus building up behind your nose, you can also get mucus coming out of the eyes. You can get mucus backing up the eustachian tubes into the back of the ear so you can get ear pressure and ear, ear fullness. And you can get mucus dripping down the back of your nose into your throat, causing a little bit of a cough. Those are common signs that we see from a cold. The color of the mucus doesn't really matter. Oftentimes people have this misconception that if the mucus is green, it means there's a bacterial infection and you need antibiotics. But the reality is that mucus comes in a rainbow of colors and the color doesn't really mean anything. Most colds last seven to 10 days, regardless of what you do or don't do. So let's talk about that. What do you do? Well, the over-the-counter cold medications really don't work very well and they have some side effects, so they are not widely recommended for use in children, and I very rarely would tell somebody to use one of those. What I'm really more focused on is trying to make the child comfortable and trying to help them clear out as much of the mucus as possible. So the key to colds is moisture. The more you moisturize that mucus and thin it down, the easier it is for it to be dripped out, sneezed out, coughed out, blown out, gotten rid of. So that means saline spray in the nose, and with an older child, saline spray and then blowing the nose. With a younger child, it means saline spray and then suctioning the nose with one of the suction uh, devices that's rapidly, uh, readily available. The other thing that can help to moisturize mucus is vapor in the air. So a vaporizer or a humidifier, something like that will help to thin down the mucus and help it to drain out more quickly. When I have children who are really, really clogged, and one of the times that I hear about that most often is when the child is sleeping at night, that they're laying flat down at night and they can't stop coughing because of all the mucus dripping. What can be really helpful is to take the child into the bathroom, turn on the shower, and have the child breathe in the steam of the shower, and that really can help to stop a coughing attack that has been caused by thick mucus stuck in the back of the throat. So it's really fluids, saline spray, vaporizer, lots and lots of liquids to drink, all those things help to thin the mucus and hopefully allow the child to get rid of it a little bit faster. What would I not expect to see with a cold? Well, I wouldn't expect to see high fever. Low grade temperature would be acceptable, but high fever is a sign that there's something else going on. I also would not expect to see any shortness of breath or any labored breathing at all. Now in the middle of a coughing attack, it can seem like the child is having a hard time breathing. But when the coughing attack has passed and that piece of mucus has gotten out of the way, the child should be breathing easily and calmly. So I would recommend if your child either runs a high fever with a cold or exhibits any sh signs of shortness of breath or any respiratory difficulty, then you should bring that child for medical attention. If you have any additional questions regarding the common cold, please feel free to email me at askdrisa at gmail.com or follow the link to the website below.